Okay, so hi. Hi. Um, we're going to start building a map of our little town, of Scooter Town. Uh, this is an important project to me, this book, and illustrating it and sharing it um, for a couple of reasons. You know, not just because I've been working on it for a long time, but also because I need to feel a sense of fairness and, and equanimity in the world. Pardon me. Most of us, or a lot of us, sometimes feel targeted and bullied, and we're exhausted by it. There is no point to bullying. There is no point to it, except that um, the bully um, is given room to let their monsters out. But it is deeply unfair. It is deeply unfair and it's deeply unsettling to, unsettling to the recipients. So what we're doing is we're building a world where that doesn't happen. We're building a world where people are treated equally and kindly and with respect and decency. And that's extremely important to me in a world where, you know, we go to school, we go to work, and it's a, just a barrage of belittling and unkindness for absolutely no reason. So let's, let's get to work on, on our little world because I need to I need to um, get myself calm before I have to walk out the door and deal with that. Ready? Let's go. Let's start building our map. And the map is basically something I, I've drawn before. I have experience with, but let's help you experience it too. Okay, it's going to be bigger than this one little piece of paper. We're going to do what we always do, which is build, um, build individual illustrations and then kind of glue them together. So let's start with a curved line, which would be a road, and then a road coming off of that. So what we're doing is we're cutting up land. I'm trying to think if this is the best way to do this, but at some point we have to understand there will be property lines, barriers, or safety zones between properties. So what I'm going to do is take the, sh the sh take the shape of the paper and work within it. Yeah, they're drawing boundaries. They get along well, but we also need boundaries where we have our own uh, sanctuaries. So we've drawn a curved line, which would be the street. Then a little line going this way so that people can pass through, whether it's on cars or not. This would be Jack's house, and this would be the turtle's house. See how I just kind of went with the shape of the paper, but also curved everything. Doop, 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 doop. The turtle house is the teapot. Why don't we start there, because it's really easy to do. The turtle house is the teapot, and then something we haven't drawn before, which is teacups. There's a um, annex on the house that's teacups. So let's just draw a couple of circles. A large one and a small one. And remember, we're probably not going to stick with this particular, these particular shapes. We're going to do them in pen as well. So there's two circles. The teacup has a handle. So we're going to draw a little rectangle coming off of it. And then the, um, the teapot, the large portion of the house, has another circle in the center, or a couple circles, because that would be the top on the teapot, boink. And off of that, we have a rectangle. We have a couple very long rectangles. One has a roof that we've drawn before, right there. That end has a roof that we've drawn before. And then this one is a balcony. 
two circles there. Feather line inside for the railings. Okay, so you should have shape like that. And then the spout, there's going to be a little square here. That's the spout that's holding everything up, and I don't have my teeth. I put my teapot away so I can't show you it in another illustration we did, but it's in another video. Okay, so that's the basic outline for that. Let's give a walkway to the uh, cups. This, there's a set of stacked uh, teacups right there, and they're upside down. So we're going to draw the bottom. We're drawing the bottom of the teacup. There are actually two teacups. One's facing up and one's facing down. So what we're doing is this is the bottom of one of the teacups. Oops. So we've got the walkway. Hmm. We could have given them more room in their yard, but it's okay. Let's go to Jack's house. And Jack's house, remember, is a top hat. Well, this is Jack's house when he was growing up. This is uh, Max's house when he was growing up, a turtle house. I mean, the teacup house. Jack's house when he was growing up is a top hat. So it's one, two lines coming down at an angle, and then the curved line at the top. Then a line for the ground. I like the top hat to be a little fat, because there's lots of bunnies in there. We've got the ground, or the bottom of the top hat, and then a curved line, because that's the brim on the top hat. Then we've got the band, which is usually silk on top hats. Right there, the band. Then we're going to put a pretend piece of paper in there. And the paper is a little bent. If you look at Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter has a piece of paper stuck in his hat, indicating the size of the hat. So we're sticking in a piece of paper. I like mine to be bent because it's been there for a long time and it probably got wet. Pardon me. So there's my piece of paper. It's a line up, line up, line for the top, pardon me, line, line. And in it, I like to put go away. Whoop, my lettering is terrible. We'll deal with that in a minute. Off of the top hat is a bunny hatch. Boink, boink, line down. Outside of the bunny hatch, line down. This is the roof. You know what? I put that too close. I won't be able to get in and out if I have it that close. So I'm going to make the outside of the bunny hatch there. Line coming down for the wood that's holding it up. I'm going to raise up the bottom of the bunny hatch a little bit. I had it too low. Remember, this is... It's not about getting it right the first time. That's not what art is. It's about trying. So there's my bunny hatch. Line, well, line for the outside, line for the bottom, line down for the roof. There's part of the frame right there. We've got two lines. And another line there for part of the frame. We're gonna have a door. the opening they get in and out of. So a little rectangle there. And then we need a ladder. Okay. Let's grab our fat pen and get to work. Okay. I'm going to do the top of the uh, the top of the top hat, and it doesn't have to be 
that line that we drew doesn't need to be a solid line. This top hat, it can be dots and dashes, because the top hat may be pretty weathered. It's been outside for a very long time, and probably not well cared for. So I've got dots and dashes. I made a little line over here coming out. I'm going to draw the ribbon. I'm shaky today. I had a bad, a very, very bad day yesterday. And I'm not expecting to have a good one today. I'm hoping to. But I'm still shaky. I was spoken to. Horribly yesterday on a bad day. So I'm shaky. You'll have to excuse me. I'm drawing the bottom, but I'm doing it with grass and dots and dashes. So I've got lines up and dots and dashes. I'm going to draw the top of the brim. And on bad days, it's best for me to use dots and dashes. It's better than trying to draw straight lines. But I don't like them anyway. I don't really care that much. Okay. I'm going to do the paper. You'll be able to see this the paper more clearly once. Get it in. So it's like hanging on, it's hanging off the hat. The roof of the house. This is um, going to be lumpy and bumpy because of the shingles, the things that sit right on top of the actual roof, and they protect it. Lumpy and bumpy. Draw the outside of the hutch. And then a ladder coming down. Okay. There's the the door to the hutch and the ladder coming down and the ladder is just going to have a few lines drawn in it well six lines and that's just what the bunnies grab onto when they're hopping up like a ladder okay let's move on to the um, teacup house I forgot to put a little thing right here because on a teapot it has a top to hold the hot water in to keep it hot, but it also has a little button so you can pick pick up the top. So that's the button. Not really a button, just a little handle. But we're going to draw the outside, and I'm going to do the best I can today. Just like you. And as you can see, I'm not drawing a full circle. Oops. It's going to be off. I'm not drawing a full circle because we've got the balcony and then we've got the annex, the extension um, where there's two bedrooms. And I'm going to draw those. And it's okay to be lumpy and bumpy because because of the shingles. So this is what we've got, it's the outside of the teacup, and then I went ahead and started drawing the annex, where the two bedrooms are. Since I did that, I'm going to go ahead and get the balcony. There's the outside of the balcony. I probably should have drawn the circles first, but we're not going to worry about it. In this world, we do what makes us most comfortable. So I'm drawing in the frame of the balcony. It's a little crookedy, but it's okay. There's the spout of the teacup where the water comes out. Now let's draw, let's go ahead and draw the, uh, the lid of the tea. Oh, geez, I'm so shaky today. The lid of the teacup and then that little button on top, that handle. Let's 
go ahead and draw the teacup. Wow, my lines are way off, but it's okay. Normally when people belittle and yell at me, I'm able to kind of shake it off a little bit. But it happens a lot, and so some days it gets to me. And today is one of those days. Plus, my poor little Bugsy is very, very sick. Very, very sick. And so all of it is making me shaky. There we go. So we've got the teacup, the top of the teacup, the handle of the teacup, and they're connected. They're all connected. Okay, let's draw, let's go ahead and do something that'll be easier, at least for me. Let's draw that pathway going in, and these lines, it's really okay to be shaky, because this is grass. They're all living in, on, all their houses are built on, built on grass plots. Ahead and drew the outline of the plot, the walkway going up to the teacups. And you see how they're all squiggly? We tried to indicate grass. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the uh, with Jack's childhood home. Oh, I forgot. There's also, oh, I blocked it off, but there's also a walkway going to Jack's house. Well, actually, it could be pointed in the other directions. Rabbits, when they're running, they're going to run away. They're going to run away. So I pointed the uh, walkway in the opposite direction of the uh, turtle house. So that's what I've got. All right, let's take our skinny pen. I'm going to erase a little bit. I'm just going to erase a little bit because I've got a lot of lines, a lot of pencil lines. And you see how they're almost the same size? Because we want them to relate to each other when, on the map. They don't have to be the exact same size, but they can be roughly the same size. Ooh, I didn't do the outside of this one. Dots and dashes, squiggly lines, just like our bushes. I'm going to try and figure out how to write go away. Because that's the general theme at the house that Jack was brought up in. And so he ends up doing that. He ends up going away from this home. So we get to fit go, or I have to fit go. Oop, it's a little big. I'm just doing it in pencil, go away. I think I want to center go. A little bit better. There we go. I found the center of the piece of paper. Go is two letters, so one on either side of the center. Away is four letters, but that W is going to be big. It's going to take up a little bit of space.
you don't have to write anything on the piece of paper. You don't even have to write a piece, have a piece of paper at all. But there, I managed to fit it in. It's not perfect, but it's fine. All right, I want to put, um, ooh, I forgot. We've got a frame around the door, so we're going to add a couple of lines on the outside of the lines that we already drew for the door. Okay? Just like that. And now let's shade it in, and it's just going to be lines. Ready? Doop. Oops, sorry. Let's see, I'm trying to do this so you can see me. I know it's hard. I don't have fancy equipment. I just have what I have. Okay? I just darkened it up with lines. Um, I think I'm going to draw extra lines around the... Just kind of sketching around and within the ladder. And that gets, gives it a slightly more imperfect feel. And the imperfect is good. I want to shade the roof. Just some lines. Just some lines. And we're gonna draw we're gonna draw shingles in here, those pieces of wood. So we'll draw some lines coming across. Lines coming across, and then the shingles are basically rectangles. So we're going to draw rectangles coming down. And this one, it's going to be harder for me to explain what you need to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw them. And then I'll show you. Oh, kitty. Alright, so... There's the shingles. And shingles don't go in a straight line down. It's not like there's one shingle and then the they all line up perfectly. Shingles kind of overlap each other. So we've got a shingle, a little space, another shingle. Then here, look at this shingle is laying in between. It's a little hard to explain, but I gave the line here in the center of this top shingle, line here for this top shingle. And then look at, see, this shingle's in the same place as this shingle. But this shingle, there's a line in the middle, line in the middle. Maybe I can, I'm not sure I'm good at explaining it. We're going to give the um, top hat some shading. So we're going to do just do some lines. You don't have to do them. If it's too much, don't. Okay. Gives a little, little bit of um, dimension. You don't have to do that. I'm going to do little lines for grass, some squiggly lines for grass. And I'm going to give him give the top hat some squiggly lines too so it looks a little more tired it looks worn out top hats were traditionally covered with a fur and they would get tired after a while the fur would start to wear out so we've got squiggly lines going for the top, around the top hat see looks like hair thin lines sticking out now i'm going to go down to the teapot and pretty much do the same thing. Uh, oh, wait, 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 sorry, I forgot. Squiggly lines around the yard. Because this is grass, and grass is messy. So just squiggly lines a go go. I'm already starting to feel a little bit better. And I want the dirt to be a little bit darker. So just lines. Line, line, line. And the lines can cross over the path, too. Because nobody's going to walk just on the path. This should little look a little beaten. 
time. And I think I want to darken up underneath the, uh, the hutch and give it a little bit of grass sticking out on the side. Okay. If you have to, freeze it and you can copy. Or not. It's okay. I'm giving the rivet a little bit of squiggly lines too because the whole house is tired. Tired and harried. No pun intended. All right, I want you to grab your pencil. What we're going to do here is um, they've given the, the patio or the balcony uh, wood kind of a pattern, and it's a nice pattern in my mind. They've laid the wood at an angle, just like that. Take the fat pen. This is, oops, just, oh, yeah, just a little detail I like to do. So that's the wood on the balcony. I'm going to erase it. And then on the roof, we've got the center of the roof, the top, the peak. And then we've got, um, we'll have other lines where the, um, shingles were laid. So let me do the roof. There's the center of the roof, just like that. And then where the shingles were laid. Okay, and when we did the shingles on, um, on our 3D house, or on our standing house, we did bubbles for the um, tar. So we just put down a whole bunch of little circles because tar, I believe, is made up of, uh, has little stones in it, little sand. So you see how I'm drawing? I'm gonna draw circles. I want you to do the same thing, but not on that very center piece, not there. We're just going to do it on the lines we drew on either side. They can be fat circles, they can be skinny circles, uh, they can be fat circles, they can be tiny circles, it doesn't matter. The lines for the tar almost disappear in the circles, but at least we know they're there. This is going to give it terrific texture and depth. You see? Circle, circle, circles everywhere. The line for the center. And just circles, 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 circles. Just fit in what you can, not to worry about the rest. Okay? I've got my circles in. I'm going to draw, take my skinny pen and kind of draw quick lines on the outside of this. Just because. Okay. Uh, what next? Oh, the turtle house. They do have flowers on the turtle house and leaves. So very quickly I'm going to do, let's do the, the uh, flowers. This is circle in the center. We've done these a lot lately. Circle in the center. And then kind of triangle shapes coming off of it, like five of them. Oop, I only fit four on there. Better do it again. So I'll draw my circle again. Okay. You see that? 
circle, five roundish triangles coming off of it. I think I'll draw another one over here. We don't have to draw the whole flower. We can just draw portions of it. Like right there, I'll just... No, wait a minute. Where do I want it? I'm just going to draw a couple of little petals indicating there's a flower there. So I've got one, two, three flowers. And to keep balance, I'm going to leave it at three and draw a part of a leaf. Remember our leaves are just a line Two curvy lines. Maybe I'll draw the point of another one. Line, two curvy lines. Maybe I'll draw a leaf over here too. A line, two curvy lines. So that's what we've got. Let's go ahead and draw at least some petals on that little teacup. So they match. Maybe put the center of a flower here. Let's just so it all ties together. Okay, I don't have a full flower. I don't have a full flower. That's just a couple petals. And draw a leaf. A line and two curvy lines. Okay, we're almost done actually with this portion of the map. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the flowers since that's where we started. Circle. Curvy rectangles. Okay. There it is. Circle. Ugh, I'm shaking again. Curvy rectangles. Curvy rectangles, or portions of one, or my other, for just my flower petals. Hi, kitty. Circle. Yeah, I know. He wants to go out in the garage, so he's yelling at me. You can't go out in the garage, you pee on things. All right, so I've got my pet. Oh, wait a minute. One more petal. Or two more petals. There. So I've got my flowers done, or the idea of flowers done. So I'm just going to do my leaves. Line. Curvy line. He also wants to go outside, but I won't let him outside because I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Okay, down to my last leaf, line, curvy lines. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and do the grass. And it's just squiggly lines and points and lines like that. See how I'm not bothering to make sure it's some version of perfect? It's my version of perfect. Because I know. What does he see? He must see a gecko or something outside. These squiggly lines show our character. They show who we are. Our energy. That's what I love about them. Okay, there we go. I think because I um, I was very shaky today, I'm just going to put some shading on that top. Just like that. It helps to kind of hide the shakiness a little bit, give it some more character. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's put some dark in the center of the little flowers. Dark lines like we always do. adding a little bit more um, character and interest. I'm going to draw lines on and outside 
the balcony lines. Kind of plays with the eye, makes it helps to make it feel more perfect ish. Our version of perfect ish or less. I don't know. It's something. I don't care. Okay, let's um add some dashes for grass. Just no particular place, just no particular direction because the grass is going to be sticking out everywhere. Okay, ready? Let's grab our scissors because these are going to be these are components to a much larger project. too close to the lines. Cut too close to the line, but it's okay. Boop. Okay, there's one component. What do you see? Oh, there's a squirrel. So Kitty is over there meowing at a squirrel now. I saw him. I know. I know. I saw him. You're the world's best hunter and you want to go outside. Shh. Shh. Stop. So I'm trying not to cut out any lines. I'm trying to cut around them. I'm trying. Right, so we've got our two houses that are going to go on the map, and we have a minute, so why don't we go ahead and do this. Um, we could draw little bushes, but I know that there's a, there's like, there's bushes right here, um, so I think we're going to draw that little island, rather. We're just going to draw that little island that will fit there. So just take your piece of scrap paper and just draw a circle. And this is actually Jack's current house. It's an island in the village. Alright. And um, bunnies make warrens underground, rabbit runs underground. So this is going to be, they, they do it in bushes, um, in leaves, so they can hide how they get in and out. So mine is just basically an egg shape, because that's a, that's the shape of my uh, piece of scrap paper. And then I drew three circles inside for the bushes. This is going to be really quick. This is very easy to do. We're going to take our big fat sharpie and do squiggly lines because this is an island with grass. This is his safe haven. Okay. Just squiggly lines. This is easier for me to do when I'm upset. Now for the bushes, we're going to do squiggly lines too. 
They don't have to be perfect circles. They're bushes. Bushes. We've got my squiggly lines for my little island, and now we're drawing bushes. And they're not perfectly round. They never are. As people, we try to make them perfectly round, but they're not. I like them square and round. I just drew little circles on the inside because that would be the main branch, like a tree. This is the trunk for the bush. And let's split those up like we do our bushes and the other cartoons for the backgrounds. Let me grab this. Just like this. We drew it into sections and then filled in with lines. Let's do the same thing here on the bushes. But because they're small, we're not going to use the Sharpie to do it. We're just going to do it. Okay. I drew four sections. There's no, you don't have to draw any particular number. I just drew three sections. And I'm not thinking, just doing. See? Just following my pen. Now we're going to draw lines to indicate uh, the leaves, the darker leaves. Okay? But we're going to draw the lines in different directions. Just like we do on the bushes. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. See? That's it. Let's do it again over here. And then drawing squiggly lines for the outside of the bushes. Okay, super squiggly. Gonna darken up this bush. Oops. What I want you to feel is that there is no real right and wrong in drawing this. I want you to feel freedom so that you feel calm. Okay. So I've done the lines and then I went squiggly on the outside. Squigglies. Let's draw some squigglies going around the island. Okay, we got squigglies going around the island. And now Jack has, usually they have two holes to get in and get out. So they always, rabbits always know, rabbits um, always have a way in and a way out. They want two, uh, two entrances or two exits, but he also runs from bush to bush for safety, like running to your bedroom when you want to feel safe. So we're going to draw the path that he uses, and it's used many times so it's imprinted in the grass. Alright, so we're kind of connecting the bushes like that. That's Jack's path. Going around in a circle. All right, and let's just add lines for grass like we did over here. Oh, we forgot to add lines here, but on Jack's old house. But just some grass. And then, do we darken that up? No, let's leave it. Just in case you want to color it. You can color it brown for dirt or green grass, it doesn't matter. All right, let's cut this guy out and then we gotta go back and draw grass for his old house.
So my island is done. Forgot about this. There should actually be a nice dark line here for the indication. Right. So I just drew a dark line there. It gives us an idea of where the bushes might meet the grass in the background. I'm going to do squiggly over that, and then lines indicating grass. Not a lot, just a few. I better add that. Now we feel like because of this line and this line, it's actually sitting with a background that we're not going to worry about today. Okay, so we did it. We've started our map. Put this here. So it's near safety. That might be a good idea. Okay, we've started the puzzle pieces to our map. All right, there we go. All right, time to get ready to deal with another day. But at least I feel more like me because we got to sit and draw. That's the important thing is when you're dealing with bullying is to know who you are and make space for yourself in any way you can to feel safe. All right. I'll see you soon. Ciao.